Today we're going to discuss how to calculate the average and standard deviation. You're always going to start with the average, even if it's not asked for in the problem. The average or mean is symbolized by x bar. So for this particular example, we have the heights of the starters on the Dallas Mavericks. So we're going to start by summing up all of those data points. And then you're going to divide by the total number of samples in your data set. So in this case, since there's five starters, we're going to divide by five. When you plug this into your calculator, if you want to do it all in one step, then you're going to want to put a big set of parentheses around all of the values in the numerator. I'm going to put the units of meters on the outside there since all of the values have units of meters. Now, when I summed it up, and you can absolutely do this in one step, but when I summed it up, I got 10.27 meters. Now, a lot of times students will forget the division step. Remember that your average should be super comparable to the numbers that you were given. So since most of the players are around two meters, we would expect the average to also be around two meters. And indeed, after we divide by five, we get 2.054 meters. So in terms of sig figs, it's all about the precision of the equipment that you're using to take the measurement. So whatever measuring tape or ruler or whatever they were using to measure the player's heights, that device went to the hundredths place. It had two decimal places. So as a result, our average can only be reported to two decimal places. Quick reminder here though, as we continue to calculate and work on the standard deviation, we want to use the unrounded version of the average. Calculating the standard deviation can be pretty tedious. So that begs the question, what is the standard deviation? Why are we doing all this work? So the standard deviation provides us with a range and we can expect the majority, not all, but a lot of our data points to fall within that range. So in essence, the standard deviation tells us about our data set. If the numbers are pretty close together, like we see with the player heights, we expect a small standard deviation. If the numbers are all over the place, then the standard deviation will be pretty large. Sometimes it even approaches the magnitude of the average value. So let's see how the formula works. It's not unusual to have a lowercase sigma represent standard deviation. There's a lot going on with the formula. You have a capital sigma, which tells you to sum the squared differences. Let's focus on that part first. So for step one, we're going to take the individual value symbolized by x subscript i, and we're going to subtract the mean, and then we're going to square it. Let me show you what I mean. So the first individual value that I'm going to do is 2.01 meters. So I'm going to do 2.01 minus the average, 2.054. Make sure you're using that unrounded average. And I wind up getting negative 0.044. At that point, keep the number displayed in your calculator, and you're going to use this key that has a little x with the squared on top. And that way you get this step done with all in one shot, and you don't have to worry about dropping sig figs or anything like that, entering a number wrong. 
So while this number is still displayed, hit x squared and you should get 0 0.0 zero one nine three six this is the number you want to record on your paper because you're going to have to repeat this four more times for the rest of the player heights so i repeated the calculation four more times and with that i systematically went through and grabbed each individual value and subtracted the average kept this number displayed in my calculator, and then I squared it. So squaring that value gets rid of the negative signs. And if after squaring you have any negative signs remaining, then you wanna go back and check your math. There should be no negative signs before you move on to step two. The next thing that I need to do is add up all of my squared values. So I'm working on this part right here that I circled in pink. And this symbol is a capital sigma and it means to add up or sum. So I am gonna sum up all of these values, add them all up. And when I do that, I get a value of 0.03 772. In step three, we're gonna take our sum and divide by n minus one. Sometimes you see standard deviation formulas where they just divide by n. That's only acceptable if you have a really, really, really big sample set, often called a population. So since we only have five players, and this is typical of lab as well, you typically only have um, you know, three, four, maybe five values. So since you're dealing with a small data set, you're gonna divide by n minus one. So that's gonna look like 0 0.03772, n represents the number in our data set, so five, five minus one is four. So my sum divided by four gives me a value of 0 0.00943, I'm not rounding anything so we get to the very end. The last step is to take the square root of this value right here. And that gives me a super long number. I'm gonna have to cut it off eventually because it just um, seems to go on forever, but 0 0.097. 108187. So now we have our standard deviation with a ridiculous number of sig figs. There's two methods, two approaches that I've seen at the college for rounding and deciding how many sig figs to use with our standard deviation. The first method is to round to the first non-zero digit. So to do that, you start on the larger side of the number, and I have a zero, I have a zero, and then I have a nine. So nine is my first non-zero digit. However, immediately following the nine is a seven. So I'm gonna have to round up that nine because I have a seven next to it. My standard deviation then is going to become 0 0.1 meters. With this approach, you typically go back to your average and round that to the same number of decimal places. So the standard deviation has one decimal place. So I'm going to take this value, the 2.054, and round that to one decimal place. So my average then would be 2.1 meters. A more formal presentation of this average and standard deviation looks like this. So we'll do 2.1 plus or minus, your average will come first, and then you do plus or minus 0.1. 
your standard deviation, and don't forget units. This is meters. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the standard deviation gives us a range. So let's calculate that range. We'll do 2.1 minus 0.1. So we're looking at 2.0 and 2.1 plus 0.1, which gives us 2.2. So most of the players have heights between two meters and 2.2 meters. And we could definitely see that there's some truth to that statement. There's a guard that's a little bit under two meters, and then there's a center that's slightly above the 2.2. But for the most part, um, most of the values are in that range. And that's what the standard deviation tells us. So in method two, we're gonna focus on the final average value that we reported earlier. So that was 2.05 meters. And we're gonna look at how many decimal places that value has. So this has two decimal places, one, two. So I'm gonna take my standard deviation and round that to two decimal places. And it winds up being above the nine again. So I'm gonna to have to round up the nine a little bit because of the seven. So my standard deviation will be 0 0.10 meters using this second method. And definitely ask your instructor which method they want you to use. Two decimal places with both the average and the standard deviation. I can report those numbers together, just like I did over here. I'm gonna do 2.05 plus or minus 0 0.10 meters. So for the last part of this problem, we're asked to calculate the percent error between our average value and a known or actual value. In this case, we're gonna use the average height of an NBA player as our actual value. Our experimental value is the average height that we calculated, that X bar. In the write-up, I do call this a percent difference, but the calculation is exactly the same. I just don't think in this case, since we're looking at the starters of the Mavericks versus the NBA heights as a whole, that it's appropriate to call it an error. It's, it's more like a difference. But in the lab, you're definitely just gonna call it a percent error. You're, con you're comparing the value that um, we know to be true against your average value or your experimental value. Let's set it up. So the percent error for our data set will be 1.98, the MBA value, minus 2.054, our average, and then you always divide by the actual value. So again, we're using the MBA value as the actual value. So the numerator has units of meters and the denominator has units of meters. These are gonna cancel and our only units at the end of the day will be the percents. When we subtract the 1.98 minus the 2.054, we get 0 0.074 and we're gonna divide by 1.98. I actually got a negative value, but there's an absolute value sign around the numerator. So I ignored the negative. And I got 3.7, 37, 37, 37, 3. It just kept on going and going and going. Let's consider sig figs with this percent error. During the subtraction step, I had two decimal places 
with the NBA value. And even though I wrote the second value to three decimal places, I really only have two decimal places because of all those values up there. So two decimal places minus two decimal places gives us two decimal places in our answer. So this numerator would have had to end at 0 0.07 if that was the end of the problem. So now I have one sig fig, and I'm considering sig figs now rather than decimal places because I'm dividing. So one sig fig divided by three sig figs, and I'm gonna go with the least number of sig figs. So I really can only report this to one sig fig, the 3.7% rounds up a little bit. And I would say that there's a 4% difference between the height of the math starting five and the average MBA player.